Good day to one and all. I'm Dr. Namrita, CEO at Omega Hospitals. So today, I'm here to talk about my perspectives and views on chronic healthcare. What is chronic healthcare? It's anything which is persisting all the time. 50 years back, it used to be diabetes. Now, it's different things. When we talk about my experience, uh, I would like to talk about my first lesson in this part. As a green, naive medical student who's seeing the world for the first time, we just finished our basic subjects and then uh, started our clinic, started seeing patients, thought we were invincible. At this point, my grandmother, who's a gynecologist herself, she took me to a rural health camp, which is where a group of doctors used to go to one village every day, educate the people there, treat them, see them, not only in terms of medical care. They used to also talk to them about protein, like a new mother, a child is having stunted growth. I'd seen so many people because they didn't have access to the kind of, uh, what is the kind of proteinaceous food? Over here, we Google, everybody knows, give formula, give uh, breast milk, everything we all know. Over there, people did not know. Or a toddler who's weaned off breast milk. What would they do? They don't know. So this was my first experience and this was my first lesson where I'd seen where a lot of things we take for granted, a lot of people are not aware of and they don't know. That was a spark. But then the direction I went later, went to when I started my post-graduation in a huge tertiary care hospital. I was a postgraduate in radiation oncology, which means we're treating cancer patients day in and day out. At that point, you see the patients, you initially talk to them, you get, uh, you get to know why, history, what, what, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. At this point, to what actually struck me, when you talk about cancer, it's mostly, maybe 80 to 90 percent, it's an old people disease, which is people over 50. Significant point which we should remember now is, after 50, at least more than 90 percent, they're all parents. Why this is important? At that age, they think any small problem they have, if they can make do with it, they make do with it. They don't want to tell the kids because they don't want to create a burden and they don't want to tell uh, them that, you know, oh, I'm having a problem, I need care. They don't want to do it. To take one clear example, I'd met this uh, woman in mid 50s. She was a mother of four daughters, all well settled. Everybody is good. Over the past six months, she's been losing weight. She's been, her appetite has decreased. She's not eating. When you ask her, she said, I've not been able to eat. Why? I'm not able to swallow. And it was not painful. It's just that she was eating less. She, the perspective was, you know, okay, I'm saving money by eating less food. That's how the generation that's how they are. At that age, they think they don't want to become a burden, so they don't want to tell their problems. Eventually, she had to be emotionally blackmailed by the family to get evaluated, basic evaluation. And then she got treatment and she's doing fine, thankfully. So that was lesson number two. No awareness is lesson number one. No knowledge is lesson number one. And then they don't want to become a burden is lesson number two. Again, after this, I'd started, I'd become a consultant. We started treating cases, we started uh, seeing patients. And at this point, I found a new thing. Previous experience, I thought they don't want to become an emotional burden. So we'd also started putting in that part of counseling in our treatment. But the new thing for us at this point was, they don't want to become a financial burden on the family. They've all worked hard all their lives, these people, even though they are good financially, they don't want to create that burden for the kids. Because by mistake, God, either, maybe they are diagnosed early. Even if they are diagnosed early, they are like, no, if I go for treatment, now it will cost so much more for my children. They have their own responsibilities, they have their own families, grandchildren's education. How can I ask for the money? It again surprised me and was another major big lesson for me in life. Following this, this was took, obviously the whole three lessons took quite a few years and almost a decade. Personal life also moves on. I would become a mother. I'm a mother to two beautiful kids. And after see, treating the patients, when I go home and see the kids, it's an emotional connect. I think becoming a mother changed me emotionally. 
and increased my EQ, emotional quotient. So, and on one side, at day, daytime, work time, we're seeing parents coming with children, we're seeing children coming with uh, parents. And uh, I'd also seen a lot of times where uh, people were, uh, they used to come. I remember very clearly one patient did not get treatment because her son was so busy with the family responsibilities that he didn't have time to go get the clearance for her payment, which was a government scheme. And... He didn't get clearance for the payment. So a lot of these things. On a similar note and experience in the past history, I'd gone to, uh, we had a student exchange program where we'd seen patients in Japan. A 70 year old man was getting comfortably treated. And he was also, he didn't need much care because they found it at a correct time. So after this, after becoming a mother, emotional care, seeing the difference between elsewhere and all, I'd realized Maybe I need to learn more. Not the clinical knowledge which I had was not enough to serve people, to serve the patients. So at this point, I'd chosen to go do my uh, MBA, full-fledged MBA to see how I can help, how I can help, how I can put my clinical knowledge and how I can make it affordable options to people. Business knowledge helps a lot in that way. So after that, at this point, I'd done my MBA and I'd also seen, well, interacted, I'd done my MBA in an out of the country and I'd seen so much of work happening in terms of medicine, in terms of technology, in terms of newer types of treatment, in terms of less painful treatments, as in, to put it in simple terms, where people didn't want to, uh, where people didn't need to get, become a burden on their family, either financially or, or in terms of care, they wouldn't become a burden. So my idea was this, to get this kind of knowledge, this kind of technology happening elsewhere. Since it happens out of the countries, when it comes to India, it becomes, most of the time I've seen it becomes expensive. So my effort has been to make it, how to make it affordable and how to get the advanced care, which will make treatment a breeze. As a part of this, my focus in today's time, after taking an administrative role in hospital, is in two directions. Direction number one is awareness. Early diagnosis, early awareness is cancer is cured, is what people think. But I want everybody to think, why is, why is it not diagnosed early? Again, goes back to my first two lessons. People at that age do not want to become a burden. But a lot of people miss the simple point that when they are diagnosed early, then the treatment becomes a breeze and they do not become a burden on anyone. Along with awareness, if you're also talking about awareness, if you're also talking about pre-treatment, I think this also has to be conveyed that the earlier it is, the better it is. I think we have to specifically tell these people that, you know, do not ignore symptoms. In fact, uh, to be simple, to put it very simply, I can tell you two things are significant. There are multiple things, but two or more. Loss of weight and loss of appetite. They think, you know, we'll just move on. It's not a problem. We'll just move on. But they become much more dangerous. And I think that is a significant part of awareness which needs to be communicated. If this is one direction of awareness, which, which means when they're diagnosed early, they get away with it and they don't become a burden on anyone. The second part would be, we can't expect everybody to diagnose early. It happens fate intervenes, sometimes you just miss, sometimes they come with advanced disease. At this time, I would like to stress that in India itself, we have advanced care, advanced diagnosis techniques, which is a part we try to introduce. I would really like to mention these three things which are uh, most important. First one would be, uh, the first picture has two, uh, two machines, which are both AI powered, Diagnosis tech, one first one is a diagnostic technique which is PET MR and the other one is AI powered LINAC ethos. The point of these things is that when people come even with advanced diseases, they can be diagnosed and they can be treated with much technology, with very good technology, newer types of drugs, newer types of technology. And the significant part about the PET MR and the PET CT which is also newer is it cuts the radiation dose. To put it to explain in common terms, previously, if somebody has cancer, treat, cancer treatment, they get a PET, MR, PET CT or PET MR, we tell them you stay away from small kids for three days because they, 
they uh, give radiation from their body because of the drug. But this, it's only, it's cuts to less than 24 hours. Advanced care. And the last one is a cyber knife. Uh, it's a radio surgery machine, robotic radio surgery machine. The good part about this is, if you're taking a lung lesion, we keep breathing. So a lot of lung gets treated and that causes later side effects. This particular machine moves with the body movements, be it digestive movements, be it breathing movements and supports people. To conclude, all of the things, whatever I've spoken about, awareness in terms of emotional or the advanced technology which we're trying to bring in, to the, which we've actually brought into the country is to keep families together. Do not think of cancer as a big black cloud which uh, ruins lives mentally, physically and financially. All we're trying to do, keep families together. And to conclude, I'd say cancer or any chronic disease is not the end of life. Thank you.